What's going on people? Welcome to the second video of the day and the second episode in our Celta Vigo career mode. Now you may be looking at the video and seeing the length and thinking, what on earth is going on DJ? Why is it a short video? That's because there is a massive decision to be made and you guys are going to decide it. So that'll be at the end of today's video. Obviously it was unexpected. So uh, there is only two games worth of gameplay to show you. I apologise for that one. I expected a bit more. My plan was to just get through the transfer window with the signings we'd already made. Of course, in the last one, we hadn't got any money left. And so that was my plan. But at the end of today's episode, there is a massive decision. And when I say massive, I mean massive. Probably one of the biggest ones ever that you're going to be able to face in this series. Let's just say that. So, first game coming up. Second leg against Atletico Madrid in this, uh, I think it was a Super Cup we were playing. In, and uh, after the first one, we won it 2-1. So we do have the aggregate lead currently. But of course, we are playing over at Atletico. And the game got underway. And we started miles better than our opponents. I don't know what had happened to Atletico Madrid, comparing it to, of course, how they played against us last season. They didn't really feel too good in the first leg, and they didn't start the second one off good either, because honestly, we managed to get the lead inside the 30th minute. Belotti here, not a lot involved in this goal, to, uh, to be fair. He just literally fake shots it, gets around the defender, and makes it in towards the back of the net. And notably as well, the defender there was actually Jonathan Tarr, a man that we looked at to try and bring in before we settled on Costas Manolas. So... Yeah, not great defending from him. He'll be looking to do a lot better. But again, we looked at this game and just thought to ourselves, we need to defend and make sure we don't allow them to get too much going. They had a free kick, whipped it in, it got cleared away. And then out of nowhere, Alan decided he's going to go on a mad run. Whips the ball over the top of the, uh, the defence, nice and early. Belotti takes the volley first time, completely catches or black off guard. He must have been thinking Belotti was going to try and take the touch. You can see he actually comes out to stop it there. And if he had have taken a touch, Belotti... I think he would have touched it straight into the hands of Janar Black, and that was maybe what the keeper was banking on. But he didn't bank on him taking it first time, and that is the reason why it ended up being 2-0. So all of a sudden, the game that looked pretty close after the first leg had completely turned away, and it was 4-1 on aggregate to us. And we continue the pressure right into the second half, 11 minutes to go. Pion Sisto, who I was just able to watch in action as well for Denmark. Very, very uh, happy to say that, because of course, don't really get to see too much La Liga football. But he is playing for Denmark at the World Cup. And I have just seen that game play out. And he scored for us here to make it 3-0. So 5-1 on aggregate. Surely now with 11 minutes left, the Super Copper in the hands of Celta Vigo. It is our second piece of silverware that we are going to win as Celta Vigo manager. Of course, adding to our La Liga triumph from last season. And uh, to be honest, this is kind of strange because, as you know... Usually, we're rampant in every series we play, whereas this one, we had to wait a full season. We finished second in our first season, had to wait until the second one to win La Liga, and we got knocked out of the Champions League last season. So, in many ways, it's nice to get our second piece of silverware, but at the same time, I want more. You know, I, I want to keep going. I want to try and win everything possible. The Champions League, the Copa de España, another La Liga trophy. I do think, though... This upcoming season is going to be very difficult indeed because teams around us are going to strengthen. They're going to get better. And although this game against Atletico really didn't show a lot, winning 3-0, I still think they'll be a tough opponent this coming season. So when the boys got ready to lift the trophy, it was, of course, going to be Hugo Mayo, who should be the thumbnail player. It seems only right, our club captain. I did ask you guys to leave some suggestions. Mayo was in there. There were shouts for uh, Balotti, for Fakir. And uh, a few other guys as well. But I decided club captain Hugo Mayo should get the opportunity to appear on the thumbnail. Just as he does that, he's going to lift that trophy there. And some of the boys are very, very happy with it. So fantastic start to this upcoming season. Of course, we've got to focus. We've got to go back to it. We're going to have a long season ahead of us. Trying to defend our La Liga title whilst trying to be competitive in Europe as well. But I'll try my best to do as best I can for you all. So the only squad number changes you need to be aware of are, uh, I think there is one, and that is Cyprian has taken number eight. I was going to uh, swap a few other ones around, but Alan remains, I think, at 43 or 52. It's a stupid number, I know, but uh, at the moment, I actually can't stop that happening. But the decision that gets made later on in today's episode will deliberate whether or not Fakia remains number 17 for this upcoming season. I was going to give him number seven, but uh, I have got plans for number seven. And at the moment, Maxi Gomez has it. So yeah, so he's keeping it until my plans come into action. A player who will no longer be at the club, though, Rizzi Demisi. He played an important part, I guess, in season one, being back up to Johnny. 
Last season, didn't really get much of a look in. He had a few really good games and then a few really poor games. So when uh, Liverpool came in for him, I counter-offered and said I wanted 14 million. And Jurgen Klopp was happy to accept that. The reason I did this is because I looked at it and I thought we have Ryan Sessegnon anyways. So he's not going to play ahead of Marcus Alonso. And we have Sessegnon as backup anyway. So I don't need Demisi at the club, 100%. So I was quite happy to accept that offer and uh, take it with a pinch of salt. And of course... I kind of looked at it and thought, well, if Demisi's good enough for Liverpool to warrant spending 14 million on, maybe he's a backup or maybe he's going to start over there. They, of course, have Robertson unless he's left the club. He's not going to start ahead of Marcus Alonso for us, so he may as well get the money in for him. Do you know what I mean? We then kicked off our La Liga season with a game that I simmed and we ended up getting the win, a 2-1 victory. Very, very slender. But we went into the second game of the episode that you're actually going to watch, the second game in La Liga itself, where we took on... Villarreal, who I think are going to be in for a pretty decent season this upcoming one. I'm going to, I'm going to say they're probably going to have another good year, and most likely will be up there in the top six, pressuring that top four. They signed, I think, Dimitri Payet, who actually scored two goals in game week one, so a definite watch for us to make sure we don't allow him too much time or space. But it wasn't actually Payet who caused the first chance in this one. He did, he was involved. He picked up the ball here. But then he plays it into uh, Fornals. He turns me so, so easily. Lays it into Enes Unal. And then this happened. Like, I just looked at this goal and I thought to myself, we're starting off again like it was last season. We conceded so many worldies and it doesn't seem like we're going to be stopping this year. Unal picks it up, turns, doesn't really have a lot to work with. So decides from about 25, 30 yards out that he's just going to pull the trigger. And it actually works out. Hits the woodwork. And ended up going into the back of the net. So uh, I was left very disappointed. But I was thinking that there wasn't a lot we could do about that goal. Not a lot that Blanco could do either. Because it was just a sensational strike. So uh, that made it 1-0. But we were very, very lucky to get back into the game very shortly after. Fakir pulling this one back and finding an equaliser from a Belotti pass. He made it 1-1. And it's nice to see because I had a little bit of uh, worries about Fakir towards the back end of last season. Not stepping up when we needed him to. But that's an important goal. Gets us back on level terms. And it remains at 1-1. We go into the second half where it was still as open as it was in the first. Both teams really going at it. And we ended up giving away a penalty. The licked, trying to win the ball in the box. Was outfoxed by the feet of a very hard player. And ended up giving away the penalty kick. Not a lot in this one. But it still is a definite penalty to which Uno was going to step up and take it. Blanco points where he thinks he's going, guesses correctly, saves it. But the ball bounces straight back and he puts in the rebound. I was so annoyed with this one because it's a good save from the spot kick. And I just felt like we weren't getting the luck we needed. If my players are reacting quicker that than the, uh, the uh, forward there, maybe it's a different story. Maybe we clear it away and maybe that doesn't go in. But at the same time, Blanco has plenty of enough time to set himself for the rebound. So I was pretty annoyed with him, to say it a little bit short. Great save initially, but he did have time to set himself in order to make the save from the rebound. But at that point, it was 2-1 Villarreal. We were trying to chase the game, and Andrea Bellotti, I don't know what happened. He's, he's probably one of the world's hottest strikers at this stage. You know, most informed strikers. Was the top scorer in the league last season for us and in the whole league itself. So when he did that, I was slightly surprised. But luckily, Pion Sisto's quick feet setting up Nabil Fakir. And we found a second equaliser in the game. We had to get back on level terms previously. And we had to do it again for this chance here. So 2-2 two -two in a game that, as I said, both real teams had chances. And both teams deserving of the point, I would say, from this one. It was a fair result in the end. And it was the point that both teams would secure. So two goals from two different scorers. Uh, you know, for them it was Unal. For us, it was Fakir. And uh, we ended up coming away with a single point. But I've got to say this for sure. I'm a little bit disappointed in the overall play. Because there's a few moments where I think we've got to be better if we are to secure another league title. So again, I don't know what this was for Lottie. Five-star weak foot. Well, there, he just didn't keep his calm and composure at all. So that is the end of the game play. And now we have the biggest decision of the series so far. You guys are going to make it. I got an offer. But Danny Garcia went in to counter it with Chelsea. I felt that this was a fair offer. They turned around and said that it wasn't. And that's not the uh, the important decision you're going to make. Because although it's, you know, fairly important, he doesn't leave the club because he can't negotiate a D with Chelsea. But it's as I came out of this. Take a look at that. Andrea Bellotti, I saw it at the top. And if you don't know how release clauses work, it doesn't actually pop up until you. You have to work out until a few days after when it comes up. 
But Red Bull Leipzig have activated a 100 and something million pound release clause in Andrea Bellotti's contract. So this is where the decision from you comes in. Because I can, of course, stop this move happening by offering Bellotti a new contract at the club. Hence, he will not leave. He will stay at the club. And he will not go to Red Bull Leipzig for that ridiculous amount of money. He remains a Celta Vigo player. But alternatively, I could let it go through. We could let him leave for £108 million. And that would be our biggest record sale so far. The question remains, is he of massive importance to us? Do we need him? So your decision today is do we offer him a new contract and stop the deal going ahead or do we let him leave the club? There'll be a poll at the top right hand side of this video to vote on. Please do cast your vote. That is why the episode is a little bit shorter today guys and that is going to be the end of the episode. If you did enjoy it, a like would be greatly appreciated and I'll see you all for the next episode very soon. A massive decision. Please do cast your vote. Adios.